Well, welcome back to another video on uh, with, with a guest speaker talking about ethics in different various uh, forms and, and ways. Maybe you've already seen that we had a, a lecture or an interview with John Houston, who is my dad. Today, we have an interview with Jacob Houston, who is my brother. So it's kind of cool that I get these uh, connections with these people who are actually involved in the very things that we're talking about. And so uh, as we begin, Jacob, just go ahead and explain to all of us what you do on a regular basis, your job, your degrees. Um, I think you got some hanging behind you there. So uh, just tell us a little bit about what you do and how you came to do what you do. Yeah. So first off, thanks for uh, for inviting me on um, to, to talk about ethics with you guys today. Um, so uh, as Joshua said, my name is uh, Jacob Houston. Um, I do have my undergrad in business management my master's in business administration. Both of those degrees do come from Freed Hardeman University. Um, currently, I am the materials manager for Jostens in Shelbyville. Um, if you haven't heard of Jostens, um, that's who, who makes your diplomas, uh, college class rings, high school class rings, all of that good stuff. Um, so it's kind of neat. Your diplomas will actually be made um, in the facility that I work at in Shelbyville. Um, so um, right now, um, uh, uh, I'm at the, the facility in Shelbyville between the warehouse, um, which is a separate location, and the Shelbyville plant. Um, I've previously been a production supervisor, a shipping supervisor, and a supply chain analyst. Um, right now, I'm over all of the indirect labor for Jostin's Shelbyville plant. Um, I lead several departments uh, that includes purchasing, production control, quality control, supply chain, and warehousing and distribution um, for the, the Shelbyville plant. Um, I handle the relationship between the plant level and the corporate office, which is up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I handle employee issues on a daily basis, um, do reviews with those employees, um, et cetera. Uh, and I solve a lot of problems that arise in my departments related to personnel issues, materials, purchasing, logistics, um, all of the above. Um, so I hope, hope that uh, answered your question. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, one thing I was going to ask you uh, about that. So, so like if you look up nitty gritty in the dictionary, your face is going to be beside it because you you have a hand in like everything right more more or less absolutely yep uh, yep so i i am um second to the plant manager uh the plant manager is actually on vacation this weekend so uh so i'm filling in for her so any uh, any issues that come from uh external sources sales reps um customer service which is external um corporate all that comes to me right now gotcha uh, well, Jacob, let's let's get into it and in talking about ethics. Um, just kind of a general question, but uh, I know a lot of your job deals with working with people. And anytime you have to work with people, people bring their issues to to the situation. So what are some ethical issues that you face on a daily basis dealing with employees or dealing with other businesses your supply chain, things like that? Yep. So um, in business, obviously, um, there are ethical dilemmas, ethical issues that come up all the time. Um, you know, I've I've got a few notes on on some things that uh, that have happened more recently. Um, but, you know, understand it in, in the business world, it's 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 an everyday thing, um, especially if you're in supervision or management. Um, you know, one thing, um, you know, we're just somewhat coming out of the the covid crisis that we've had for almost the past two years now um you know the main ethical issue of that is uh, mask keeping our employees safe um vaccines what's what's the plant going to do um, about vaccines are we going to require those um you know obviously we still have a business to run um, so that's the other side of the coin is we have a business to run and, you know, if an employee gets COVID, well, now we don't have a person to run that machine for the two weeks while they're getting better. Um, you know, we, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have actually um, lost 
two people to COVID this year. Um, so it's been a it's been a big um, ethical issue that the plant has faced. Um, fortunately, um, our corporate office uh, makes the the standard rules on that. So right now, you know, we do have to continue wearing masks until um, the employee population as a whole reaches seventy percent vaccinated. Um, so that's the that's the rule that that Jostens as a whole has um, has set apart. Um, some other issues, uh, one that's, that's kind of a constant is providing fair treatment to all employees, um, not showing any partiality, um, between my employees. Um, you know, there lots of times employees feel like, um, you know, a certain employee gets special treatment, things like that. Um, whether that's always the case or not. Um, but that, that is a, is an ethical issue that, uh, that we face, um, drug use among our employees. Unfortunately, that's a, that's a big one. Um, you know, you have an employee that comes in, um, and does very well, um, you know, comes to work every day, but, you know, you know, they do some, uh, less than stellar recreational activities outside of work. Um, but you know that they're going to have a drug test coming up. Well, you just wasted, um, you know, four or six weeks training that employee um, before they have their drug test. Um, so, you know, so 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 what do you do? Um, do you give that employee a warning? Do you, um, you know, off the radar say, hey, you know, you're going to have to gonna have to take this test in a few weeks, um, you know, or or do you, um, you know, let nature run its course and and the uh, the test come back and uh, and be positive and then we have to terminate them and then we don't have anybody um, to run that machine we have to start over from scratch um so this this is a big one from covid uh, as well i haven't had to deal with this as much i do have very good employees and supervisors that report to me but uh salary employees coming into work late and leaving early um, again, there, there is usually some flexibility with this. Uh, a lot of the employees that, that do that, uh, make up their hours at home, things like that. But, um, you know, somebody that comes into work late and leaves early, if they're not on the clock, if their time is not recorded, then that's stealing from the company. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big ethical issue, um, that, that businesses deal with a lot. Um. Let's see. Um, one result from COVID um, this year was salary cuts and employee job losses. Um, I believe that was, you know, pretty general across the board, not just for Jostens, um, but for, for all businesses as a whole. Um, and um, also, um, this was probably the biggest ethical issue that we uh, dealt with this past spring was um, our labor shortages. So, um, you know, there, there are a couple of ethical issues that came up of this. Um, so w- back in the spring, um, it is a very good thing for Jostens, but sales went up unplanned 70% and labor went down 60%. Therefore, you have a lot of orders and no way to get those orders out the door. Um, so one thing that we had to do, we had to had to put our our guys on um, twelve hour shifts seven days a week, um, and that's that's an awful lot for uh, for employees to handle. Um, you know, I know from experience because I worked those shifts myself. Um, but also along with that, um, any new temp employee, all, all of our new hires come through temp agencies. But any new temporary employee, um, we, we did have to boost their starting wage to $15 an hour from $10 an hour. Just, you know, t- $10 an hour wasn't cutting it. People could stay at home and, and you know, not do anything and draw on employment and make $14 an hour. Mm-hmm. So we had to bump up to 15 Well, you know, we, we were lucky we still had our jobs. But at the same time, all these hourly employees that have been working here 10, 15 years um, still weren't at the $15 an hour mark. And unfortunately, 
um, you know, the decision was made that, that we couldn't, we couldn't move them up. Um, they had to stay where they were. Um, and then all of these new temporary employees were coming in, um, at, at $15 an hour, which was, you know, at least a dollar or two more than what they were making. Um, you know, I could understand how, how employees would, would be disgruntled at that. Um, you know, did I believe that that was, um, an ethical thing for the company to do, um, off the radar? No. Um, but, you know, as, as a leader of the company, um, my job is to enforce what, uh, what the other higher up leaders, uh, decide. So that's, that's what I had to do. Um, you know, I had to stand, stand behind that, um, and at the same time, you know, empathize with uh, with the employees that that were disgruntled. Um, so again, there are all sorts of ethical issues that um, you know that I face in the business world um, on a day in day out basis. Um, you know, a lot more than these, but these are some of the some of the larger, more recent ones um, that I've had to deal with. Yeah, I think, too, the broader of scope that you're in, like in management or whatever, the more of the issues you're going to have to face because you're dealing with different uh, activities and realms of things. So, Jacob, let me ask you now, um, you know, we hear in the business world this phrase like, well, it's only business or it's just it's not it's only but it's just business. It's not that we're trying to do good things, bad things, whatever. It's, it's just it's just business. So. How do you, as someone involved in business, trying to make money, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, is making some money. So how do you balance the need to gain profit for your company with doing the right thing, uh, treating your customers right, not cheating your customers, and then at the the end of the day, turning around to your employees and taking care of them too? Yep. So so it's, it's definitely a difficult thing to do. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always a difficult thing to have the best interest of the company, the best interest of your employees and the best interest of your, your personal gain, um, all together in one triangle, so to speak. Um, and balancing all that's definitely, definitely a tough thing to do. Um, so some things that, uh, that I do is, is I always try to stay as customer focused as I can. Um, you know, what's, um, what, what's going to benefit the customer the most now in business, sometimes, uh, your customers are different than just the consumer. Um, you know, your customers could be internal customers as well, but, but what's going to benefit those people the most, because ultimately that's who you're working for, uh, instead of working directly for your boss in business, you're, you're, you're working for the customer. That's the same in sales. That's the same in management. Um, accounting, all the above. Um, but in business, um, you know, you will have issues where you're faced with ethical challenges. Uh, it's, it's an unavoidable thing. Um, but business does not have to be a separate sector from God. So one thing that, um, that really helps me in these situations is, is to pray about the ethical dilemmas that you face. Um, you know, study the scriptures to learn and understand what's right versus what's wrong. Um, business is very rarely a black and white scenario. There's always going to be a lot of gray area and managing that gray area is tough. Um, but keeping God on your side, um, that, that will be a big help in facing those situations. Um, there have been a lot of situations that have come up in, in, in my personal career, um, to where, you know, I've, I've had to rely on God, um, a lot more than I would have, have ever thought, um, you know, to, to make sure that situations worked out. Okay. Um, but it, it's, it's hard to be a Christian in the workplace. Um, but, you know, living a Christian lifestyle that, that will segue into developing Christian, uh, or moral habits, um, that will allow you to act a, a, like a Christian all the time. Um, you know, not just when you're in, in the church house on Sunday morning. Um, but if, if you can truly, um, learn to, to live and, uh, adopt that lifestyle of a Christian lifestyle, then that's going to be a lot of the battle, 
um, whenever you're trying to decide what's right versus what's wrong, what that, what's ethical, what's not in the workplace. Yeah, so uh, you were talking earlier about it, doing different things with employees, having having some issues with employees. And you mentioned like you have an employee that you hire uh, who's a drug user and you have to terminate them or whatever. So uh, what, what do you do when you have like an employee or a boss or uh, some other person other than yourself who's acted in an unethical way and then you have to step in and and deal with that what's your what's your process does your business have like a code of conduct that you have to follow or is it just something that you do yourself yeah so um so you know m- mo- most businesses most most companies i'll say um, not every business has policies but most companies do have policies um, but you know, aside from that, this, this is kind of a, a tough question to answer, um, because, you know, of course there's the, there's the cookie cutter goody two shoes, um, answer, you know, that, that I'll give of, well, I'll report them. I'll call the ethics hotline. I'll report them to the better business bureau. You know, I'll, I'll do my, do my good business duties and, um, uh, you know, and, and report the, the unethical behavior. Uh, but, but then there's more of the real life answer, um, that you give once you're actually in the business world. Um, so again, this is, you know, this is my answer, uh, to this question. Um, but, um, I believe that, you know, if, if you've, if you've been in the business world before, if you've been in the, the workplace in general, um, you'll understand that it's a lot harder to report someone for unethical behavior than what you might think. Um, in the business world today, at most companies, employees are trained on either a yearly or, or a bi-yearly um, basis, basis on how to report those unethical issues um, and practices. But in, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's generally very frowned upon in the business world to report someone, especially if it's a boss or a colleague, um, et cetera. So in that case, what should you do? Um, and, and that's something I've, I've had to struggle with before. Um, and, you know, the, the first thing that I have to do um, whenever somebody's doing something that I don't agree with or I don't think is, is ethical, um, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm not in the wrong myself. Uh, make sure that I don't have any, any bigger issues that, that I'm doing um, firsthand. So, so check yourself, so to speak. Um, that, that's, that's my first rule of thumb, uh, you know, and, and of course, um, you know, Jesus said the same thing in Matthew chapter seven, verses three through five, um, in the sermon on the Mount, you know, he said, why you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye. Then he goes on to say, you hypocrite first, take the log out of your own eye then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Um, that's one thing that, uh, that I always, you know, I always first priority is, you know, m- make sure, make sure I'm good before I open a can of worms with somebody else. Um, so, um, you know, I, after that, my, my next rule of thumb now for, for minor ethical issues, that's more of on a, a personal basis with someone. Um, you know, I, I believe that you should talk to the person directly about what's going on, um, you know, with kindness, out of love, just like you would a fellow Christian, um, you know, and, and again, I get that from Galatians in chapter six verses, you know, one and two, um, where it says, brothers, if anyone is called in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, from there, um, you know, w- one important thing to, to note or bring out is, is the part where it says, keep watch on yourself, lest you be tempted. Mm-hmm. Be careful, guys. Um, it's, it's always so easy to be persuaded or, um, you know, the, the saying, if, if, if you hang around trash long enough, you're going to start smelling like trash. Um, 
you know, it's, it's the same, the same kind of principle. So you have to make sure that, um, you know, whenever you're talking to someone um, about uh, any type of unethical behavior that you keep in mind that, that, you know, you can easily be swayed into that as well. Um, whether it be, you know, financial issues, um, tax breaks, um, you know, so stealing any sort of personal property. I mean, I mean, you have to, you have to remember, you know, if you steal a pen from work, well, that's still stealing, um, you know, and, and a lot, a lot of, you know, a lot of companies have policies against that. Um, but also, um, you know, on in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, uh, if your brother sins against you, go, go and tell him his fault um, between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you've gained your brother. Um, now, the kicker here is, well, what if he don't listen to you? Well, now, for one, you've become an accomplice. If you do not report, you know, what, what all is going on, um, you know, and, and so if, and then you're also, you also become a target to that person. Now they're, they're mad at you. You, you've busted them. Um, they know that. So, so you have to begin to watch your back. Um, so for, for any larger issues like this, that's what your HR department's for. Um, uh, you know, a HR department knows all of the, um, the ethical procedures, all the policies. Um, so, so go to your HR department um, and then let them handle that issue. Uh, now, I do want to say, be prepared for the consequences. Um, this is huge. Uh, you know, all throughout the New Testament, uh, there are many examples of somebody who was doing good works but still had to pay the price for it, even though they were in the wrong. Um, so the same is true with business ethics. If you report someone for acting unethically, you've got to be prepared for that person to be terminated. You've got to be prepared for others within the company to be mad at you and take unrelated or take out unrelated things out on you. Um, you've got to be prepared for your job to get a lot harder because now your boss thinks that you're just a little tattletale. Um, you've got to be prepared for others to stop talking to you. Um, because now they're all afraid that you're going to report them for something. Um, you've got to be prepared for your company to put a target on your back and try to get you to quit or find simple ways to get you fired. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the business world is not church. Um, colleagues are not always Christians. And if they are, they don't always act like it in the workplace, unfortunately. So, um, you know, but ha however, this should, this should not keep you from doing the right thing. Um, you know, a prime example, um, Paul and Silas, uh, you know, in Acts, they were persecuted for doing the wrong thing, but yet they, they still did it anyway. Um, you know, and, um, and also, you know, a, a prime point from, from James chapter four and verse 17. Uh, so whoever does the right thing, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Uh, if you know the right thing to do and in reporting someone's unethical behavior, then that's what you got to do. Um, and, you know, I always seek to do the right thing, even if it does cause consequences. Um, and as I mentioned before, that there are policies. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll all companies have them. Most businesses have them. Uh, but but look to those policies and, and let that help determine what's right and wrong. And, of course, there's still always going to be some gray areas in there as well. Yeah, very good. Uh, one last question for you, Jacob, before we go. Um, when I think about someone in uh, the realm of business and, and like you're in, you know, especially in management, um, there's always a desire to climb the ladder. There's a desire to, uh, to to move up in the company or to advance yourself. So uh, my last question for you is how do you balance the desire to move up in the business, to advance yourself, to get the promotion, and also dealing with other people and being a godly person in the workplace where you're not cheating someone or you know, you're, you're not throwing someone else under the bus? How, how can you do both because you know, I mean it, people tell me all the time as an auctioneer 
that they say, you know, you can't be an auctioneer and a Christian because you're trying to cheat people to get them to pay more than what something's worth. I kind of think the same applies to, you know, the people's perspective of management. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, so just some more backstory on me. So I, I came into Jostens right out of school as a supervisor. Um, that was my first job. I did have my undergrad while I was a supervisor. I went back and got my MBA. Um, you know, as of right now, um, there's only two people in the whole Jostens Shelbyville sector that has an MBA, and that's myself and our HR manager. Um, and of course we don't think any more highly of ourselves because of that, but there are a lot of people um, here that are, that are in management that this has been their only job and they've been here for, you know, 40 years. One, one supervisor has been here for 48 years, um, no college degree, no education. Um, but, you know, I, I came in and, you know, and now I, I've gone through um, four jobs, uh, five technically, um, but now, you know, now I'm, I'm a manager, uh, and all those, you know, all those other guys, they're still supervisors or hourly employees or, or what have you. And, and there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the main, um, the main thing is, you know, that they, they view that a certain way. And especially if you're going to be a leader and try to change and persuade and motivate those employees, you've got to let them know that you're there to help them and not hurt them. Uh, that, that's the main thing. Uh, being humble, um, you know, um, really, really caring about the employees um, is, is a, a big deal. Uh, that's, that's one thing that's, that's kind of gone to the wayside in a lot of businesses, um, you know, unfortunately, even Jostens. Um, but that's one thing that I try to pull to the forefront is is um, the relationships uh, with my employees and, you know, checking up on their kids, um, you know, checking up on on their kids ball games that they have or, you know, or, or how's their how's their wife doing that's been sick or how's their, you know, how's their how's their husband doing that, you know, that had a heart attack, things like that. Um, but you, you've got to earn others respect. Um, and, and you do that by showing them that you're an asset to, to them instead of a hindrance. Um, you know, when I came on board with Jostens, I was 22 years old. A lot of my employees were, you know, old enough to be my grandparents and they had worked here for years and years and years. Um, and you know, so, so you could just imagine how that went over. Um, you know, I'll say my, my, my first year, um, well, was tough. Um, gaining all those guys respect and, and getting them to do what I ask of them without, you know, throwing a fit. Um, but, uh, but you, you learn from all those experiences and, and you try to, uh, to just be a leader. Um, you know, I think one main thing to understand is that, uh, that somebody is always watching, um, in the workplace, uh, you know, even even if I go grocery shopping with my wife and, and my son, um, you know, at Walmart, nine times out of 10, I'm going to run into somebody that works for me, works with me, um, you know, as a boyfriend, girlfriend of somebody that I've just had to terminate. Um, so, you know, I, I, always understanding that, that somebody's always watching is is a key thing to um to, to moving up and, and staying humble and, and, you know, always thinking about the, um, the employees reactions to what you're doing. Yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, earlier about what y'all do at Jostens is you print diplomas and make the graduation gowns and caps and things like that. Do y'all actually make those for Faulkner? Do you know? Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, so we do Faulkner's diploma. Um, and announcement products, any sort of um, of graduation announcements, um, those all go through the factory here. Um, the, the regalia, um, I'm guessing the, the caps and gowns come from Jostens, but those will come from either Mexico or Lawrence, South Carolina. Um, and then all of the, the class rings, if anybody gets a college class ring, Jostens does sell those, and those are made down in Texas. 
Um, but you know, as far as any um, any apparel, um, sweatshirts, hoodies, all of that, um, that's that's done in in our facility here. Um, and any diploma, diploma cover, or announcement product. All right, cool. Well, thank you, Jacob, for being with us and for talking to us today about business ethics. Remember, guys, to uh, be sure to watch all the recordings and to stay on top of your assignments. Uh, when you graduate, as I know you all will, think of Jacob and uh, the, the great work that he's done and, uh, and Justin's for the things that they do in, in uh, preparing those for us. So with that, we're going to stop the recording. And uh, like I say, just be sure to continue to keep on top of watching these and uh, if you have any questions about business ethics, you can always email me. And if I can get with Jacob, he, I'm sure he will answer any questions that you might have, uh, perhaps indirectly through me, but we, we can take care of that. So uh, God bless and we'll see you in the next lecture.